Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to go over diagnostics and repairs for feeder failure. That is the portion of your extruder system that is the drive gear with the stepper motor that pushes the filament. So stay tuned. So your printer has on it what's called an extruder. The extruder is actually a system that com is comprised of two primary components. You have the feeder and you have the hot end. Now the reason we call all of that the extruder is because on older printers they started off as direct drive. So the extruder and the feeder are all in one part sitting on your your x-axis carriage and drives your filament through the printer. But then later on they found a cheaper lighter way of doing something similar called a Bowden system where we take the extruder and we split it into two pieces. Feeder which sits on the x carriage and the hot end which sits on the moving carriage on the x-axis that moves back and forth. This makes that whole assembly a little lighter. So you can move, in theory, a little bit faster. In reality, you can't move that much faster because, well, you still got to move the bed back and forth, and the bed's a big, heavy piece of metal. But it does allow it to be a little bit cheaper to build because you don't have to build it as rigid or as strong because you're not hagging as much weight. This also allows you to do cantilevered printing, meaning printers with one Z-axis instead of two Z-axis, and it works pretty well. You can use a... Um, direct drive on those printers but they become a little problematic if you don't build it right because you have all that weight pushing down on that cantilevered arm so we're going to go over the feeder unit today and the different ways in which it can fail we're going to be using the typical feeder unit which is going to be like similar to what Creality uses actually this is what Creality uses but 99% of the low cost Chinese printers you buy out there are going to have the same kind of feeder unit I'm going to show you the problems you can have how to identify them and how to fix them or work around them so here is your typical printer. This actually happens to be an Ender 3 Max, but this here is your hot end. This up here is your feeder. I'll give you a close of that in a second. The combination of these two forms the extruder. And the reason you say, well, they're two separate things, well, because in the early days they were one part. So if you look up pictures of, I'll try to insert a picture here. So that was a picture of a, a one how I3. Uh, and you can see that the hot end and the feeder are all together in one piece. You had the extruder motor here, and the hot end here, and the cooling fan here, and it was all one piece. So on these printers, they are separate. So we split apart the hot end and the feeder, and we connected it with a Bowden tube. So those are the components involved. Let's take a look at the focus of today's video, the feeder unit. So this here is the feeder unit. So in here, down here you have your stepper motor, that's your extruder stepper motor. This is the feeder itself. This is the drive gear that's connected directly to the shaft of the extruder motor. This is your idler bearing. This is your tension arm. And this is the main body. The spring is what applies tension to the arm. Now, typical failure points here, um, Bowden tube comes loose. So if this compression fitting fails or the tube itself fails, this could come loose. You've seen people post pictures where the tube pops out. The solution to that is usually either to cut off the end of the Bowden tube and reinsert it, or if the compression fitting itself is bad, you would replace the compression fitting. I've even seen 3D printed versions of this where it actually pulls the fitting right out of the printer. <laughs> um, most feed problems for the feeder are actually hot end problems. So if your hot end clogs, or you have heat creep, or you have a gap in your PTFE nozzle interface, which is causing back pressure and resistance, that resistance is going to be manifested here. Typically, you're not going to see it here at the hot end, except as a leak, if you have that problem. But otherwise, you're not going to see it here because there's no moving parts here. So the, the failure typically does not manifest here. It manifests here. So first thing to double check is to make sure your hot end is working correctly. Um, I have a separate video for that. But we're going to assume we've deduced it's not the hot end and the problem is at the feeder. For example, I made a very large print on this printer of a monkey bucket. I'm going to plant some lettuce in this. And it failed on me twice. So here's the first failure. And then it failed again about that high up. And <laughs> I happened to look over and see what the problem was. So this is a problem you're going to want to check on your printer, especially if it's new. It happens a lot. But these printers get shipped from China, and this motor here has two grub screws. I can't actually make it turn so easily. 
Yeah, it's not so easy to make turn, but there's one of the grub screws right there. So you can see right there, that's a grub screw. What happens is those grub screws come loose and this motor, this gear is no longer physically attached to the shaft. So the shaft is turning, but the gear is not. So of course you don't drive any filament. Worse is when it's intermittent, when it kind of sometimes grabs, but not always. <coughs> so it's loose, but not all the way. So you might not notice it right away. It might start off working fine and then come loose as it's printing. And you won't notice it. Be like, what's going on? You press this and you push filament in. Filament extrudes so you know your hot end's okay. You know, it didn't take an undue amount of pressure. What happens is this is coming loose. So this shaft has a flat face. You need to make sure one of the grub screws is lined up with that flat face and tightened down and the other one's tightened down. You might even want to put a little tiny, tiny bit of blue thread locker, medium thread locker on there to make sure those don't come loose. I actually suggest manufacturers do that. Tighten that from the factory and apply thread locker. On my, in my case, it came loose enough that this gear drive actually pushed up and completely disengaged from the filament. <laughs> so the, this, this gear was sitting up here. So it was not lined up. The teeth here was no longer lined up with the idler bearing right here, the idler pulley, which it has to line up between the two of them. You can see that there. So that bearing needs to sit at the correct height and the teeth need to sit at the correct height to drive the filament from here through here into your Bowden tube. So check that. The other problem you could have is over tightening. If you have this too tight, this is plastic and it has plasticity you can actually crush this plastic and if this is too tight you'll actually crush the plastic instead of pushing the plastic it'll actually squish the plastic and eject it out the back end or chew straight through it because it, it does not have enough torque to pull the filament through so instead it chews it and crushes it so you need to be careful this is not too tight this actually feels a little on the tight side you see how little i can move that so far it's been working, but I might loosen that up a little bit. Uh, another problem you could have is that this is a tension arm. This applies a spring force on it. See how that pulley's moving back there, the little bearing pulley? Well, you press this to allow you to push and pull the filament through manually, and this also um, applies a constant pressure to the filament. Well, if this bolt here is too tight, you could depress this and then it doesn't quite come back all the way. And if it doesn't quite come back all the way, this doesn't get gripped properly and it doesn't push the filament and what people end up doing is they tighten this tighten this tighten this until you overcome the friction from this but now you're squeezing it too tight and you end up chewing up your filament or just not extruding it at all that is also something that can happen okay. now a common point of failure for this particular style feeder unit because it's plastic is that you see this plastic arm comes down here right there and that's what this bearing sits on. This is like an L-shaped arm. You see the whole arm moving when I do this. Yeah. See how the bearing moves? Well, this bearing can this arm can crack right there. Because it's a very thin bit of plastic there. And over time, just from pressure, from this tension, the, the plastic gives way over time. And that arm will crack. And that's something you won't notice. You're gonna look at it and say, it looks fine. But then, you know, you're, the, the, well, the only way to really tell is to unscrew this, pop this off, and look at the other side of it. But if it's not gripping the filament and this is not too tight or too loose, that's probably what it is. It probably cracked the arm right there. For about seven or eight bucks, you can replace this with an... Actually, is this a metal one? Actually, I think this is a metal one. No, it's plastic. Looks kind of like metal. Huh kind of feels like it but they they make a metal version of this that you could buy on amazon it's the exact same thing it's just made of aluminum and it's like eight dollars so if you want to just eliminate the problem from the get-go do that now this is a new style compression fitting normally it's a brass pneumatic um compression fitting for this tube now they have this new one which is plastic and it just pops right in there this is just to keep it from bouncing toggling back and forth um it's like a spacer spacers but um, um, I was leery at first, but so far, I have never had one of these fail. Never. I like these. I'm going to switch over to these. Anytime I have to replace a, a feeder, I'm going to switch over to that style because so far, it's working flawlessly. Um, what else? Oh, misalignment. So if this bearing and this drive gear are not at the correct height, 
this filament may get pushed up or down. That'll usually be the bearing, like if you have the washers on the wrong side when you assemble it. So if you look down in here, there's a hole that the filament passes through right there, and there's a hole it comes out of here. These need to all be aligned, otherwise you're going to be torquing and twisting the filament, and that would not be good. Another potential problem you could run into is where the filament, you can actually see it's already, oh no, it hasn't done it yet. Nope, not yet. But you can see that um, it'll actually start chewing a slot into the plastic here. And it can even chew a slot into the aluminum ones. Most people don't realize that. Yes, it can chew into the aluminum ones. The solution to that is a little more complicated. On this, it'd be pretty easy. This one already has a space for a filament runout sensor, which I will not be installing. Um, I could 3D print something that would bolt to here that would have a little piece of PTFE tube right here. And that piece of PTFE tube would handle the wear and the drag of the filament coming in because this angle will get larger as it goes up. Now this one's not going to get chewed up because the filament roll is down here. But I may be moving the filament roll up here just because I prefer the smaller footprint of the printer. It gets rid of all the space that the printer consumes. And the problem with that is your filament path is going to look like this and that will chew right into that like a saw. So you can either drill a hole into the end of that, the exact size of this Bowden tube, and stick a piece of Bowden tube in there, or put something here, a guide of some sort here, to guide the filament into that hole with your piece of PTFE tube on here. And you know, a piece of PTFE tube wears, you cut another two inch section, you replace it, it's not a problem. And that is about it for the feeder. Other potential failure modes, I've had it where this plug was a little loose. It just wasn't inserted all the way, so you had an intermittent connection. Or one of these wires in here wasn't inserted all the way. You see, this is what's called a JST connector. And those are actually little metal tabs. And those tabs lock each of those four wires into there. I've had them come loose. Just have to push them back in, and then you're good to go. You could also have a bad stepper motor. You could also have a bad cable going to the brain board. The brain board is the processing unit, which on this printer is inside the brain box right here. You could also have a bad stepper driver. Those are unlikely problems. Those usually aren't the issue. Usually the issue is too tight, too tight, misaligned, or grub screws loose, and this is turning freely. You, you might not even be able to turn it by grabbing it, but under the process of printing back and forth, this is not turning correctly, and that will cause a problem, or this being loose. That's usually where the problems are. So if you have any questions, let me know, and I will do my best to answer them for you.